Greetings, Uncle Travelling Matt here, and today is the end of my fourth day, I think, maybe fifth. You think arrival one, two, and three? Yeah, fourth day, fourth day in Cyprus uh, on my trip with uh, Alex Jacoby. So today we've been in Nicosia, or maybe we've been in Levkosia, and I'm going to start with that. So I'm in the capital of Cyprus, as I said it was last night, uh, on my hotel balcony. But um, this city we know as Nicosia, but it's actually also called Levkosia or um, uh, Levkosia. Right, so Levkosia is the Turkish name, and that's the official name for the other half of the city. The official name for this half of the city is Levkosia, um, which is the Greek name. So what is Nicosia? Well, for large periods uh, in Cypriot history, they were dominated by the Franks. It was basically the Crusaders who got chucked out of the Holy Land, came here and established it as their base. And they struggled to say some of the Greek names, one of them being Lefkosia. So they said Nicosia, which was easier, and the name stuck as the official name. But the, the Greek name is Lefkosia, and when the when Cyprus became independent, they reinstituted some of the Greek names, although this one doesn't seem to have caught on and most people seem to call it Nicosia which I actually think sounds like a better name but uh, anyway that's that so whether I'm in Lefkosia or, or Nicosia this is where I am and today we've thoroughly explored the Greek half of the capital now I've got a bit of a map here so you can see it's half of a circle and, and there's all these um, fortifications right so these are Venetian fortifications from the 15th century. They're pretty, pretty dramatic, and you can well you can't walk around them all because there's the green line through the middle, which literally is there, and the other half is inside is in the Turkish Cyprus. But um, they're they're complete and they're pretty impressive, and there are some nice walks underneath them. And they delineate what is the the old city and the new city the new city we had a little look of a bit around uh, last night um when we went out for for dinner we we went out uh, for our evening meal um we had we had a wander around until we found a place that was good kind of taverna type place and had a fantastic meal of, of meat medse with some beautiful sausages and different meats and stuff and i washed it down with retsina which I think alex who's a bit of a wine connoisseur was not overly impressed with but i enjoyed the retsina and then we came back to the balcony and we uh, we enjoyed some sweet byzantino wine that we'd bought up in kikos um, and then it was very pleasant uh, but um that was that um and we saw a bit of the new city, which reminds me, it's a little bit like Beirut or Tel Aviv. It's kind of soulless and a lot of concrete high rises and really like bland bars. Um, not poor in any way, but just not, nothing really to recommend it. But the old city's different, it is an old city. And this morning after breakfast, we crossed over into there and, and explored thoroughly. So what did we see? Well, we, I'm, I'm going to keep referring to the book. Um, we went to a church first. Um, I can't see the name of the church on there. It wasn't one that was in the guidebook. But what was interesting about this church, it was nothing particularly spectacular, but it, it was um, actually run by the Alexandria uh, Exarchate. So Orthodox Christianity is one, in that it's Orthodox, but there are different patriarchs or Exarchates. 
And um, so there's, you know, a Greek one and a Bulgarian one and a Russian one. And this particular church was run, run by the Alexandria one in, in North Africa. Um, although stuff was in Greek and it, it was a pretty standard Orthodox church. One thing that was interesting, though, is that all the icons um, and the iconstances were, were covered up. And we thought that might be uh, like it is with statues and, and that in Lent in, in Anglican and Catholic churches. Um, because because of the holy period, and and later we asked, and that was the case, and they they covered them up from Monday Thursday, which is today, uh, through Good Friday to Holy Saturday, and then they are revealed in the night of Holy Saturday, um, and we have we did since go in other other Orthodox churches that did that, so we went there. We then went to a mosque, uh, the first one that I've been to on this trip. Um, let's see what it's called. It's called the Ormeria Mosque, but it was very obvious uh, for the moment set inside that it was an old uh, church, and it was an old Catholic church. And of course, Nicosia was the, the, the capital of the, the Frankish kingdom. And do you know what? A lot, a lot of the Orthodox churches actually look quite Frankish. Like they've got Gothic windows, and they're, they're long, like a long nave rather than, um, you know, the cruciform shape that you would expect from an Orthodox church. Now, whether that means they are Frankish churches that were converted, or whether it means they just copied the style of the Frankish churches here in Cyprus, I don't know. But that that design seems to be quite popular here. But anyway, we had, this mosque, to be honest, was really disappointing because it was bland inside and it was really badly converted, like really badly done. Like they they'd shoved a, a a new roof on and it was much lower and it was like really jerry built and even though it was about five centuries old and yeah it was just just a bit of a jumbled mess to be honest um but yeah we had a look at there then we looked at the brand new cathedral that they've built um next door which was a bit like that russian church it was big and soulless um you know we, i think these things take time to bed in but it was interesting because while we were there there was some sort of service going on where um, military personnel were there and two of them were standing to attention by the altar and maybe they were starting their national service or something like that and um, <clears throat> so that was nice to see and then we went to the old cathedral and the old cathedral uh, was really quite special it, it, it's um, it's a painted church so it, I mean yeah we've seen a lot of those and compared to the others it wasn't anything special but it, it, the paintings were more Western in style, it's, and it, it was a really interesting church. What what I liked, there was a tour group being given, um, you know, the lecture in Spanish. I actually understood it all, which was quite good. My my Spanish is paying off because it was a Greek guy speaking it, so he was speaking quite slowly and clearly. But this again was another. Um, it was a, a Latin, a Frankish Catholic church that had been converted, and. Um, you could tell that because on the end outside there was actually a frieze and of course Orthodox churches don't do statues or 3D friezes but there was one on the end of there from its days as a Catholic church. Uh, it was next to the Archbishop's Palace which uh, was, um, we, we saw Macarius's cars were there um, and it was also uh, next to the first school in Cyprus which had a, a classical Greek kind of bit and then a, a really nice art deco library and it was quite pleasant so we had a look at that um then we wandered off to look at another church and an incredible um ottoman era house and again you know i've been to quite a, a few uh, examples of ottoman domestic architecture and i like them but they this one was um the, the bottom floor was very frankish and i believe it was it was a, 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 a you know a, a Frankish house, a Latin house, uh, and but then the upper floors were Ottoman, and and th there really was this kind of mishmash of cultures going on here in Cyprus that I've not really seen elsewhere, and it was an incredible building, and there was the the, the rooms were very nice, and one of them had a, a gorgeous painting of a city. And we tried to find out what the city was, and nobody knew, which is a shame. But really, really nice. That was, to me, the highlight of the day. It was a really peaceful place. It was great. And we went for coffee, then went to see the Liberty Memorial, which was it, it, it was good. It was quite evocative. It was of people coming out of prison. Uh, but it needed a little bit of repair to it. So, um, yeah, that was a shame. We went to the Famagusta Gate in the fortifications, and then we went to the... The, like the struggle about the the national liberation struggle 
so that's the all the EOKA stuff. Um, what was that like? Well, it was well presented and stuff, although most of it was only in Greek. Uh, and yeah, the British are the bad guys, but. I don't know, I've been to so many National Liberation Struggle Museums that they do seem to be a bit much of a muchness. And, you know, it, it was a kind of partisan struggle against the oppressors and they eventually won and there's a, you know, a kind of memorial to all the martyrs at the end. And it was nice to have some of the personal possessions and stuff. But for me, I'm not a nationalist, so I struggle to relate in that way. But also, I don't know, it's just... I, this sounds controversial, but like, if you're gonna struggle, if you're gonna lose your life, you know, lose it for a greater cause, lose it for something like you know equality or socialism that that offers something for all people rather than something that's quite divisive and doesn't really achieve anything at the end. Uh, I mean, that's my politics coming through, but um, you know, I've seen it, particularly in the Balkans so many of these you know nationalist liberation struggle things. I don't know, but it was interesting. It was a piece of history at the end of the day. Um, there was a, a very nice folklore museum next door, and that had, like, you know, kind of ethnographic type art, you know, like traditional weaving and, and pictures and that. And that was in the old um, old Archbishop's Palace, I think it was. But it, again, it was another Frankish building. It had been a monastery at some point, so there was Frankish elements there. That was nice. We then walked into the center, we, we had uh, something to eat then, and then had a quick look at the Maronite church, which was is modern, um, and but that was, um, it, it was quite pleasant actually, and of course Alex and I had traveled to Lebanon together, so it was nice to, to see that, uh, and the Catholic church, which actually juts out into the green line, so we saw, you know, the, the border, like literally the, the boarded off streets, um, you know, where the other side is Turkish, Cyprus, uh, and that, that's quite interesting. Um, I also went up a tower. It's, it's just a, a, a high-rise block, but the reason you go up is it's got great views over the whole of the city, and to see the panorama of the whole of the old town and then beyond was pretty cool. Um, what was also quite cool is that the two girls on the, the, on the desk were Bulgarian, and they were chatting loudly in Bulgarian, so uh, I don't quite know how they ended up there, but... They did, and, and, and there we are. Uh, and then finally we split up, and Alex went to do his thing. Uh, I think he went to a motorcycle museum. I don't know. And then I went to the Cyprus Museum, which he'd been to before, and that had just an amazing collection of antiquities uh, up until kind of the beginning of the Christian era, I guess. Um, and so they, they have these kind of um, plank-shaped figures, that were they're pretty unique to Cyprus and uh, you know they're pretty ancient like I think in Neolithic times and um, they they are pretty cool I quite like them There's something very funky about the plank shaped figures and my, my favorite one was there was like a bowl of all the, and all these plank shaped figures were inside and that was like a representation of a sacred space really like that and then there was some very stylized pottery in that and it gradually morphed into what we might call classical Greek um, style pottery so that that was interesting um you know there was a there was a load of inscriptions on stones and one of them i think was in the phoenician alphabet that the, um we, we saw in in, in biblos when we went there so that was interesting too uh but then i was really tired so i went back to the hotel had to sleep i just came later and uh, then we went out for a fish meal and it was that's one of the finest meals i've had in years i had a uh, an octopus casserole in red wine sauce and had a, a hint of uh, coconut. And Alex, he is a wine connoisseur, he bought uh, an expensive bottle of wine, something he wanted to do, uh, and that was very pleasant. And I have to say, absolutely stuffed, but what a glorious meal. And um, yes, so it's all good. So that's it for me. Tomorrow I'm going back into Lefkosia or Nicosia or whatever else you want to call it. But most people will be calling it Lefkosia because I'm going into across the, to the Turkish side. So wish me luck and thanks for watching and keep traveling. <laughs> Και πρώτο στήνε την κοινή και τον ουρανό, την ώρα.